with my presentation from the ground up, well, um, talk about a little source sync tracing within the JVM. Uh, my name is Steve van der Baan. I'm Dutch. Uh, I live in the UK at the moment, as I work with Seven Safe and, according to my wife, also f for OWASP. The project that I'm going to talk about started uh, about a year and a half ago at uh, Upsec EU in Hamburg, where I was talking with these two guys, uh, Jim Manico and Dennis Cruz, about um, source sync tracing and that the string class actually is too permissive within Java. Uh, I think also John Wielander posted that in, in his blog then, that for example with the all HTTP requests, we know what is our allowed values, we know what type of length in there, and still we use the strings to communicate with it. And we should find a way to, uh, or add a way to control that. Maybe take the string as a class and give it the so-called evil bit if information comes into that which you do not trust. Well, um, when after talking with these two guys, they told me, well, if you feel that passionate about it, prove that you can do it. And fortunately, I managed to do that in this time immediate. So that's why I'm now here talking about that little project. So the basic idea that I had was that every string that will enter into your application will be marked with a so-called evil bit. And every exit point for of your application, it will check, does this string contain the evil bit? And yeah, we'll make a warning in some sort of fashion. A couple of pointers what I want to add to it is that um, the application itself should not be changed whatsoever. You should just take an application, run it, and this should be uh, marked within that. So from that point, it's more intended towards also testers that can test the application in the staging environment, uh, not bothered with uh, production, etc. So when I started in my quest to discover, like, how can I do this uh, type of uh, tracing, there are a couple of technologies that I um, investigated at first. First was with bytecode manipulation for using uh, Java Syst, but then you had to change the bootstrap class. Um, is IOP, but especially with reflecting classes and trying to do that in a dynamic way is quite uh, challenging. Or the Java agent, um, like JRebel does with their uh, instrumentation. But or the la uh, last combi was a combination of the two, having some byte co co manipulated uh, using Java agent. I prefer to wanted to go through the Java agent uh, route, but I discovered that you cannot touch the string class as is, because all those Java agents are uh, loaded after the bootstrap classes are loaded. And since I'm liking to keep it simple, I only just then went for that sim one com uh, route that was left, that is the full bytecode manipulation and doing like that. And also, like Zap says that his uh, technology it is designed to be used by people with a wide range of security experience, but especially be to used by people that are within the testers or uh, DevOps and those type of people. They should be able uh, to use it and test it and demonstrate if an ap application is secure or not. So back to the basic idea. Um, here you see the first uh, test class that I made just to have a uh, proof of concept to work with of what I wanted to do. Um, a simple read from the, uh, your input in, your, in a buffered reader. You put in a name like, what is your name? You read the line and then you s the simple hello, uh, that's your name. In the first black one you see that when you do it, I type in my name, Stephen, hello to you. But the second one, I add a lot of backspaces into it and this also, again, shows the uh, permissiveness of uh, the string. It will just accept all those backspaces as a valid character. So when you output it again, it will override what was uh, prepended before it. 
So you see, also already on this type of level, you can hack the output uh, what is shown. So, um, like I said, the, um, my intention was then to use it underneath your application to have there the uh, uh, definition of what is an evil string and make that uh, parsable throughout the application. So when it really enters your application at the, at the other side, you can have uh, various uh, checks and gates to see does this evil string leave your application. I have to warn you, um, after this I will show a lot of uh, snippets of code of uh, everything that I have done. So that's the premise of how I will show you. So first is the tainting of the uh, uh, code itself. What is the basic where you start to work with? So the first a couple of basic classes that you have to manipulate. First of all, the string. As I said, th the string is the type of class that I want to follow throughout my application. So I have to give that a particular uh, t method tag so I, that I can so, so demonstrate this is a tainted string. The other one is the string builder, because string by itself doesn't do that much. But every time when you concatenate or if you do specific uh, uh, transformations on a string, str underneath string builder is being used. So that one had to be uh, changed as well. Because I want to have a bit more dynamic uh, finding like where are my sources and where are my sinks, I also um, changed the class loader a little bit. Because the class loader, all classes that are loaded into uh, the JVM first come in as a block of bytes and they are instantiated by that particular class loader. This also applies to uh, classes that are loaded through the reflection technique. So if you touch the class loader, you will have the default point where classes will come into your application. And as I said, op at the moment, um, it is a fairly small application which I have. Um, I have a generator which will, as I show later, generate the various base classes, uh, some utility classes, and that's the basic of what I will add uh, into the bootstrap classes. So how do I build it? Um, as I said, first I create my project classes. And I, in that I manipulate the base classes, the string builder, class loader. After that, support classes. And last step I do is to create a jar to use it also uh, with other techniques. And for uh, the string, I, I really liked Java Assist because that is a uh, extremely powerful on uh, the bytecode manipulation. As you see, um, you can use simple uh, code snippets which you can enter. It also has a couple of uh, predefined get methods, getters and setters, which make it easy to uh, define what you want to add to uh, a particular class. As you see, I first add a, uh, just a Boolean value to mark if something is tainted or not. And uh, I'm using the fact that the moment is instantiated, it will be default be false. I also uh, added the stack trace element. So if I have a location where a string comes in, and I mark that one as tainted, I also will set a stack trace uh, into this position so that when it enters, I can immediately say, this is where the string was created, and here I am uh, when it goes out. When you write that, uh, you just write it to a file, and you can use it as a separate class. Same also goes for the class loader, although um, there they use a lot of uh, method inheritance, so it was quite tricky to first find out which particular defined class I had to use. I uh, managed to find that it was the one with the longest amount of parameters in it, so um, I uh, read that one. I rename it so that I can uh, just pre-process any classes before it's given to the last stage within the class loader. I can wrap it if I want. But I have to be careful that I'm not wrapping everything, 
So I already uh, start with checking for a little bit of uh, class files, like do they, uh, uh, are they the ones that I don't want to uh, wrap at this moment? So use the normal one. But if it's uh, one that I am interested in, uh, I will uh, check on a couple of levels. Have I uh, defined a specific, this is a class that I want to uh, in instrument, then modify it. Or does it implement a particular interface which I'm interested in? You have to modify it. Or does it extend a particular abstract class? Uh, then I uh, want to modify it as well. So, like I said, if the class needs uh, wrapping, I chose the XML format to check it against the interfaces or parents. And this whole interface will contain then all the classes and methods that can be uh, labeled as sources or sinks. And this is how my XML at the moment looks like. So you see a simple setup where I have a couple of sources in it, a couple of sinks defined. And on the, the bottom one, I have st stuff which is uh, checked more on the runtime. So when you go to the proof of concept that I showed earlier, then more into a test uh, uh, unit test type of uh, setup. Um, as you see, I s uh, said that the read line method within the buffered reader, um, that should be considered a source. With every test class, I use this particular uh, get username function. So I am always sure that this will uh, give me a tainted string uh, as a result. And this is within the uh, Gradle uh, method, the way on how I um, check it. Uh, and as you see, I just, all the classes that I had generated for that particular class, I prepended on the bootstrap class path. And as you see, that it's only just a couple of classes. And I will uh, use the throw exception at this moment, because within uh, unit test, it's easy to uh, capture. Uh, these were the, like the test classes. The first one is just a simple the input output. The second is where I used string concatenation. And the third, the string dot format, th like three different ways of uh, manipulating the string. And long live the green uh, flag of past where they s when that happens with uh, unit test. Same goes for as the if you want to do uh, SQL. SQL, the, the, uh, the statements are, with are like interfaces, the um, sinks. So uh, the execute or the execute query, which accept a string, they will be marked as a, um, uh, as a sink. As you see in the test class, I again set it up everything. First had to set up a uh, De uh, dummy database for everything to compile correctly. But the moment the execute uh, query is being hit, that's where uh, the exception is being thrown, which is expected by this particular test class. And so I can, at that point, I demonstrate that this string, uh, this tainted string, was tr they tr tried to get out within the execute query. Uh, yeah, the fail actually should be up, but I, uh, it's my way of uh, writing first nicely, closing or everything, and then, yeah, you shouldn't reach this particular point. So that's why it's there. But in case in case that it goes wrong, that it goes wrong, I, I want to make sure that everything is closed correctly. Um, J two E E. Yeah. Fortunate within the whole J2EE, um, that particular stack is like a subset above your uh, above the bootstrap classes, but still below your uh, web application. So that means that the J2EE environment really is, as they is, are dependent on the bootstrap classes, you can instrument them as well. Um, unfortunately, at this moment, I cannot do it for JSPs. Um, I'm using uh, the internal uh, test runner from uh, Jetty. 
and every time I get a particular error, it, it just says exception without any method at all. So it will be a, a nice challenge to discover that one. But the code, that, the code that is generated by it, if I make that into a servlet, um, it will pass and still tell me that the whole uh, request output is perceived as uh, sync. So it, it's technically possible. This is just a little hurdle that I found on my way and still have to fix. The only difference with the um, J2EE test type of testing is that um, you can't use the uh, expect exception because the moment you have an exception, the whole uh, uh, servlet in the container will stop running and it will not then reach particular other points. So I just say like, do not throw this particular exception, but log it in the outside. And as you see within the uh, test, particular test case that the obtained exception was logged in uh, the system dot out. So you can uh, locate it there still. So. Like I did J2EE and I was started to think to myself, why should I stop there? So um, then I started for various other uh, JVM languages, Groovy, Scala, Jython, JRuby, Rhino, because they are all running within the JVM. So technically, they should also uh, be able to be tested with this source sync uh, method. But it gives, for every language, it gives a new challenge how to discover where it goes, where it comes from, and how you should uh, annotate those particular methods. But still, as I said, name those particular languages. They are wrapped underneath your particular application like a J2EE uh, application. So if you then take a uh, Groovy, quite a uh, a favorable uh, language. The top, uh, the top is the Groovy, the proof of concept which I had, which just um, reads the contents of a particular file and then does a print line of that file. Like I said, it's extremely basic, but it does prove the point. Can you identify the sources and identify the sinks? Um, I first thought it was with the default uh, Groovy so it's like the get text, as that is a uh, valid method within the uh, Java I.O. file. Although, when I started to decompile it and use JD GUI, I discovered um, they use the cast to string type of method. So the moment I started to use those, the uh, short type handling from an object to cast to string, that as a, uh, if I identify that as a source, then everything again goes correctly. The, as you see, I'm using uh, an end script in that particular way, where I uh, just call the Groovy with all the particular Groovy class paths. So I don't, uh, I'm not relying on the whole Groovy environment. I just deconstructed their way of executing the Groovy, which boils down to the simple uh, uh, Java executing, and then. As you see here, it says that things are detected. The reason why it says it's multiple is because with every time also within the string builder, I do make these uh, mentioning that, hey, I found here a string, string which is tainted. Maybe I should do something from this point as well. Scala, another uh, interesting language as it has a completely different uh, um, approach. Instead, they're not object oriented, but they're a functional language. A simple, uh, again, a simple uh, read from file makes the string out of it, close it, and do a print line of it. Again, for, fortunately for, my, for me, the uh, source was easily defined as the Scala IO.source class, and in, in that the make string uh, thing. And again, with end, I executed it through a j simple Java execution. And again, also, the, their 
the taint was detected. A particular file that I use uh, as input does contain a couple of backspaces to, um, because as I see, make that as the point, this is going wrong, this is something that you should uh, avoid or, or test against. The last language that I uh, did for now was uh, Jython, where again I open the file, read all the lines and print them. Then again I execute it through the Java with the particular JVM arguments. I give it the particular Jython, uh, Python code, and also there uh, the taint was uh, detected. So as you see, all those various uh, JVM languages, uh, because they are running uh, on top of all the bootstrap classes of Java, can also be traced in this particular uh, way. So what are my intentions to go forward with this one? Um, first, getting J JSPs to uh, compile and run and test as well. Nothing bugs me more than uh, running into a particular exception and not be able to figure out why it happens and why can't I fix it. And maybe also think of doing it with uh, Java server faces to see if um, the same rules, the same principles apply to those areas as well. JRuby, my next target to include in the whole JVM, although I assume that that will uh, work out. The next thing is what I want to do is start to more optimize that the outputs that will be uh, given will be uh, more valuable. At the moment, I either give you the full stack traces, um, but I want to give it a bit more uh, substance that really you can uh, see this was the stack trace where it started. Here's, for example, went through a string builder, so it was a little bit manipulated, and here is when it went out. So that you can f follow it a bit more precise and maybe uh, use it with a sort of graphical uh, interface because that's uh, easier to and more beautiful. There are some s projects that are uh, uh, similar uh, also in this particular thing. Um, Java Gra Vipasa does a bit the same like what I do. The difference what they do is they change the first uh, character of uh, the string which you have, and but they shift the whole process w one character on, just that they have their own uh, taint identifier placed in there. The GSR 308 also tries to help you in this, but they are more on the uh, coding level. They're not on already uh, available applications, so I see it a bit as the, it's a nice future on to help identify where are potential problems with source and sinks, but this is only for future uh, applications that will come, not for applications that are currently running in, in your environment, core as well, and also the um, uh, contrast that the, uh, Jeff Williams, which was uh, pre before me during his presentation, they also do the same job. They chose the uh, Java agent uh, route. So those are. Are there questions around this project? How long? How long did it take to figure this out? Um, I'm not doing it full time because uh, my job and my wife also want to have some spare time. But I think last year, yeah, last year I was with working on it. Sir. Yeah, um, I did think about it, like to have an additional check, like okay, here is it. Uh, cleansed. The only point is I can't make the um, distinct identification. Is it cleansed correctly and uh, appropriately for the particular sink? 
because um, they can make their own, they can use, for example, a SAPI, where you know this is type of cleansing for these type of uh, outputs. But they, staying within a SAPI, you have like HTML encoding, um, JSON encoding, and it only writes to a particular output. You can't see from where it writes in which does it, is it be written in a HTML attribute or an HTML tag. I can't make that distinction. So I am thinking of making it a tag like, yeah, they're doing something with it, but you still have to check, is it the correct uh, sanitation on it? Yeah, I will turn it into an OWASP project. And it, at the moment, it's on GitHub, but I am planning within the next month uh, to make it an official OWASP project and, in and announce it like that. No problem. Other, other questions? No question? Thank you for your attention.